Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install the infamous police grill on the Ford Crown Victoria. Now, I'm not talking about the standard P71 honeycomb grill or the older P71 slotted grill that was just in black. The grill I'm actually talking about is none other than the infamous Tomar police grill. It is incredibly rare and hard to find these days, especially since they have not been produced since 2004 and the last time that they were available for departments to buy was in 2005. Not to mention that I'm in Canada, which zero departments up here actually use them on their fleet. A few of them had a few grills for certain cars, but none of them actually outfitted an entire fleet with the Tomar police grill. So now, fast forward to 2021, and you will notice that they are incredibly hard to find. You can no longer go to a junkyard and find one of these. Even when they were new and still in use, they were still a lot harder to find in junkyards because people either took them off because they're different or the departments actually took them off because they were technically upfitted equipment since they weren't manufactured by Ford Motor Company. To install a grill on a Crown Victoria or remove it is incredibly easy. It's held in by five bolts and then there's four clips at the bottom that need to be popped out and then the grill will come out. Alright, so the tools that you're going to need for this job is going to be a ratchet, a 3 8 drive ratchet, an extension bar. You should be good with a 6 inch extension bar, maybe even a 5 inch extension bar. It just really helps because of where the bolts are, it's almost impossible to get the ratchet in. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is a 7 16 um, socket, but you're going to need the deep one just because they're studs. So what you're really removing is a nut off of a stud, and you're loosening it out. And because of the way the stud sticks out, you need the deep one, or else it's just going to hit and bottom out in the socket, and you will never be able to get it off. So what we're going to do, we get under the hood, we're going to remove the cover that's covering the front grill area, and normally there's clips, so if there is, use a trim removal tool or a clip removal tool just so you don't break them, and otherwise you're going to pull it like that, and then back, and you just have to get it around the hood latch, and it'll come off, and yeah, this one that I have is broken, that's all they had at the scrap yard, so that's what I got. It is going to be hard to get a good angle, but I will try my best to get it. But in case I don't, what you are removing are the studs there. So that one there, that one right there, and that one right there. And then there's also one in the corner on the other side. However, mine is actually broken. It's very common that these break because they're screwed into plastic. And once you over tighten them once, they're broken. So just be careful with that. When it comes to the bottom, so there you have that clip right there. And you're going to have four of those. So you can see one's here, one right there and one on each corner. You can actually see them from the outside of the grill. So that's what these things are that stick up in your grill. You notice them on all the P7-1s and all the Crown Vicks, the slotted grills, they hide a little bit more, but those are the clips that are holding them in. I'll show you how to remove those. Once again, this is a plastic grill, so it is very easy to break, so just be careful when you're removing it. Okay, so this is why you really need the deeper socket so you can see where the stud is and once you get it on in place um, without an extension you will have very little room to work with with an extension it brings it out way over here and you have more than enough room to work with okay so the best way I could describe it to you is basically you got a pinch in the clips so there is a center tab and you're going to want to squeeze it with a long nose pliers and work from one end out. When you squeeze in one end at the same time, pull the outside. I can't get the camera in there to get you an angle, but once I get the grill out, I'll show you exactly what I mean and uh, basically what you have to press. 
So like I said, this is not going to be a problem for anyone who doesn't have a siren. But if it's right here, you have anything blocking lights or anything like that, it'll most likely get in the way. However, like I said, once you press in these tabs, I'll do a better close-up on it. You're just going to want to squeeze these tabs with a long nose pliers and then they'll come right out. So I'll get a close up on it when I have the grill completely off. I forgot that I had the wires for the lights running through so I just have to disconnect the wires for the lights and then pull them through and then feed them through the new grill. Now here is a direct comparison from the P71 grill, the standard honeycomb grill, to the Tomar police grill. So you see right away that there is lights installed on the grill. Those are amber as of right now. Um, they could have came in any color the department wanted to. They could be clear, red, blue, whatever you really wanted to. They are Whalen 7E lights. So now installation is incredibly easy. All you're gonna have to do is line up the clips and the studs of the grill with the holes that uh, correspond to them. So I find it easiest to line up the grill by just placing it up against the front, lining up the top, and then once you get the top to go in, then you have to align the bottom and it'll clip right in. Now once you have the top in, just make sure you push equally from each side or else it'll be really hard to get in. And once you have that done, then what you're gonna wanna do is start clipping in the bottom, just like that. And now what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go tighten all of the uh, nuts that are holding it in. If you have all five of them, what I highly suggest doing is doing the two outside and the center one and then you tighten it from this side, this side, so from the furthest outside on the driver's side, the furthest outside on the passenger side, and work your way in. That way the grill will curve and seat evenly to your car, or else you might have a little bit of a gap in the end. So using a 7 socket, you're gonna go ahead and tighten it, just tighten it till it's snug and be very careful with it because it is plastic like I said and it's easy to break so just don't over tighten it and you should be good so the lights that we're going to be installing are the Whalen 7E LED lights so these are very old lights definitely older technology they're much better now however these are the ones that came with the grill uh, you can use 700 series lights, however this is a Tomar grill, so they are supposed to be Tomar uh, light heads, so I'm not sure if they still make them or if they make them in LED, you might have to get a used set off of eBay. If I can find a link, I will definitely put a link to the lights that you're supposed to use with these. So, now with the install. So the install is by far the easiest thing on this whole process because all you have to do is basically grab your two wires slide them through the hole of the grill and then you're going to position the grill light and it should fit snug without even screws they're a bit finicky to actually fit I believe the Tomar ones would probably fit a lot better but everyone seems to be using Whalen when it comes to these things so once you get it in, like that, so then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to install the screws. So start with this one, make sure just to hold it in place, so that, and tighten it up, and make sure not to over tighten it because it is tightening into plastic, and it catches pretty much right away. So. Be sure not to over tighten it. Alright, so now all that's left to do is to put back the trim in the engine bay. And like I said, that stuff goes in really easy. All you're going to have to do is basically 
slide it in on an angle just like this around the area where the lock is um, the hood latch I mean and once you get it around there then what you're going to want to do is if you have the clips on yours you're going to want to clip it back in so it doesn't um, move around too much I don't have the clips for it I ordered them I got this from the scrapyard because mine didn't have it so when the clips come, I'll definitely install them, but it doesn't move, so it's all good. Probably going to swap it out for clear lenses. Either that or blue lenses or something like that. Just something different. What I like about it, too, is... This is giving tribute to those old Vicks, the 98 to 2001, actually I think even 2002, they started using the honeycomb grill, but I think some of them might have actually had this grill, where it had the slotted grill, so it really gives tribute to all the old school Crown Vicks that we don't see anymore. Let's wait till I get these wired up. And now all that's left to do is wire up the grill. So I'm going to go ahead, wire those up. And basically what I'm going to be doing is taking the two positive wires and joining them to one. And then doing the same with the ground and ground it to a bolt. Um, and then I'm going to run the cables in the car and connect it to the switch box. You may notice I said nothing about a fuse. The switch box is a fused connection. It's a fused box. Every switch is on its own fuse. So you don't have to worry about it. It's not going to burn down the car. If anything, the fuse will blow. Alright, so now I'm going to leave you guys with some glamour shots of the new grill. Now that I finished wiring up everything, so... So you'll notice right away that one of the lights is not strobing. It is not on the right flash mode. I believe it's on steady burn. I'll have to figure out how to get it off. At least it works. So as far as I know, um, you probably need to wire it to a momentary switch. I'm not 100% sure. I will ask someone if you know how to wire it up properly or know how to change it. Feel free to leave a comment. I'll appreciate it. The only other thing I noticed is they're not overly bright considering they're actual Wayland lights compared to, I know a lot of people will tell people about using China lights or eBay lights, Amazon lights on their car. When you compare it to cheap lights, for example like the lights on the push bar, there's no real difference. The older lights aren't much better. In fact, they're a little bit worse than some of the newer, cheaper lights. So for people who aren't cops or don't actually need them on a daily basis, it's perfectly fine, in my opinion at least, to use the cheap lights. And there you go. It's not much brighter than the cheap lights. And of course, you can't see too good because those ones are projecting directly outwards. They do absolutely nothing to the front, but they are side-mounted lights. So... It doesn't really make a difference, that's what the visor lights are for, that's for what the lights on the mirror are for, and now I guess that's for the Tomar grill, that's what those lights are for.
All right, so that's gonna wrap up the video. If you're new here, consider subscribing, give it a thumbs up, and if you have any video suggestions, leave it in the comments down below.